Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. Today we are in the garden. I love any days like this because the beautiful weather is uh, is really showing for us today. It's just awesome. It's such a great day. And so I wanted to get out here and film some episodes for you all. So what we're going to be talking about today in today's episode is the difference between endo and echo mycorrhiza, endo and ecto mycorrhiza and what it can do in your garden. Now I get asked often a lot uh, kind of what the difference is and the difference is just between annuals and perennials. Ectomycorrhiza is for perennials. So stuff like uh, y your goji berries, um, I'm looking at my goji berries, but um, some of your perennial herbs, we got a perennial herb garden over there. So um, any of your perennials that are going to come back, strawberries, fruit trees, um, even oak trees and pine trees and stuff like that. Anything that's going to come back you need ectomycorrhiza for. Then endomycorrhiza is stuff for your annuals. So tomatoes and peppers and kale, lettuce, doesn't really matter uh, what it is but that type of stuff. Stuff that will um, that will basically die back at the end of the year. It's important to get both types of mycorrhiza because if you if you want to have the best success um, you don't want to be short suiting some of your other plants. So we get um, this is a uh, This is just a, a mycos. It's from extreme gardening. I'm not being sponsored to say this, but uh, this is what we use It's a fantastic absolutely fantastic variety of mycorrhiza. However, it is only uh, ectomycorrhiza um, It is uh, or sorry. It's only endomycorrhiza not ecto. So all of our perennials we actually give trifecta plus because we have both endo and ecto mycorrhiza in the fertilizer. So this we come back and we just give them a, an additional little shot of it. Um, but we could, you know, leave well enough alone and and just apply just the trifecta, which has the endo and uh, ecto mycorrhiza. So what does it do for your garden? Now that's the next biggest question: is do I need it, and what does it do in my garden? Well. Mycorrhiza is actually a fungus, it's a beneficial fungus, that when you put it in your soil, it will attach to plant roots. It's designed to attach to plant roots. It's not like other mushrooms that will search out, um, you know, punky wood and stuff and, and colonize that. It actually colonizes living tissue. So if you do not have live plants in your soil, it's really not going to do anything. It's not going to colonize anything and it won't benefit because what it does is it attaches to your plant roots. It grows actually as a part of the plant. It's crazy, it becomes a part of the plant and grows the root system up to three times as large. Then what it does is it helps to search out um, trace minerals and uh, different nutrients that are locked in the soil that the plants cannot uptake. It will uptake those nutrients and give it to the plant in exchange for sugar because fungus actually needs a host plant to give it sugars and plants produce sugars through photosynthesis and that sugar actually will help keep the mycorrhiza alive. So it is a great symbiotic relationship that the two have and in the garden it's especially important because when we're planting close like this, plants can get stressed but having mycorrhiza in the soil will help increase the root system, it will help increase the health and the vigor of the plant. It's also going to help uh, with disease resistance. It's going to help any nutrient deficiencies that there might be because they're so planted so close together. And then the very last thing that's going to help is with drought tolerance because when you have a root system that's three times bigger, that's three times more water that the plant can uptake and it can get down deeper in the soil. It can get out farther in the soil. So uh, I highly recommend adding it to your garden. And, and that's really it, that's the, that's the gist of it. Um, you will have to reapply every year because of the fact that the, the mycorrhiza does not like cold temperatures. So if you're living someplace where it's warm, um, you don't have to worry about that nearly as much. But here in Michigan, it gets down to, who knows, negative 18, it's horrible in the winter time. And mycorrhiza just cannot survive in that temperature, so they'll die off. And so we have to reapply every year, unfortunately. But um, it's great for that year. And also what you can do is you can take, we'll take a scoop of this um, and they don't, they don't recommend this, but I'm telling you, you can do this and it works just fine. They sell a product, it's called a root drenching mycorrhiza. It's, it's the exact same thing, just way more expensive. Um, you take about uh, a scoop of this. We have a, a coffee scoop in here, but um, it's about a 
it's about like a teaspoon ish and we'll mix that in with a five gallons of water mix it up and we will actually drench the roots because in each gram of this stuff there is 300 it's called propagules it's 300 spores so 300 mycorrhizae spores per gram and uh and it's going to just go right down to where the roots are and you're gonna be able to stretch it a little further because this bag right here is a two pound bag and I think it cost me $27, $28 on Amazon. Um, and, uh, and, it's, and it lasted us, I think it did about three quarters of the beds here. So we did not get all the way done. So I left, I left about three or four tablespoons in the bottom of the bag so I can do a root drench because some is better than none. And that's what I wanna stress. Some people, they wanna put the full on amount um, and they say it's so expensive, but I can't I can't afford it then Don't put the full on amount and stretch it out use the watering method And you're going to get some because the thing is is it only takes one spore people think it people think that it takes 300 spores to colonize the root system It's a fungus and the fungus only needs one spore to attach to the root of your plant and then it actually will colonize so 300 just increases your odds of that one spore touching the roots. You're not going to have better results if you add a thousand spores. You're not going to have any better if you add, you know, 10,000. It's just that one that matters. So, um, you know, I hope you all uh, will take something from this video. If anything, it's something that I think people should be adding to the garden, and it's something that we need to be doing more of because right now it's it's very um, there's there's not a lot known about it. I mean, agric agriculture extensions and and Universities have been talking about this stuff for years and uh, the home gardening movement has just really picked up on it in the past few years But it really has not taken hold to the point where you see it in big box stores And I think that that is where we need to be getting um, not that I think big box stores need to be getting anywhere But uh, I just think that once they start hitting big box stores You know that it's gone mainstream and I true I truly use it every year and I believe in it because it does give me amazing results so Hopefully it gives you amazing results as well. I will talk to you all later. This is Luke from the MI Gardener channel. Hoping you all enjoyed. And as always, I hope you all are growing bigger going home. Catch you later. Bye.